Hello world, it's Dave here. We've got another uh, culture shock video for you, of course. And uh, today it was just a bunch of random funny things. These aren't exactly that shocking, but they're kind of cool. I talk about the weather as kind of a mark of how Canadian I am. Um, first things first, it was crazy today. I I'm used to some different weather patterns in my life. I'm from Vancouver. We have a decent range, and I've been tree planting in the north, in the north of Canada. And as a result of that, I've seen some really crazy things as well. But one thing you can experience when you come to Japan, and I'm kind of, I'm like one prefecture over from Tokyo, so if you're kind of in that area, uh, man, is the lightning storms, lightning and thunder like I have never seen in my entire life. Like stuff that you're sitting in the building and I'm afraid that my desk is so, it's too close to the wall because with the rumble that is caused from these things, it like it shakes the windows I've never been in something like that before in my life so you know for a brief moment I'm kinda like oh hell this is uh, you know I don't know what to think of this but it's okay everybody's just kinda like laughing at it and stuff I have to bear in mind that these are the same people who kinda chuckle when there's like what to me feels like life-threatening earthquakes are happening and they're just kinda like oh okay okay which is like pretty big pretty big <laughs> And um, I'm like, what the hell is this? Which just happened the other day, actually. I've been here for about five months, and I've only had two earthquakes. So I guess that's more than I've experienced in many years when I've been in uh, Vancouver. But that doesn't seem too bad, two earthquakes. They're pretty big, though, pretty scary. But they're fine, and they're over within, like, call it two minutes. Uh, another thing you might enjoy, I've already talked about this in one of my other videos, is that I'm going back, this is the first like couple weeks of school, and one of the things that they have is a uh, sports day, and like, I don't, it's not just like a few sports, it's a huge festival, and Japanese preparation, they're like practicing for the festival like a week beforehand, um, when it's just a sports day that I would think back in Canada, you know, you just talk about it coming and then you have it, but they actually prepare for it in practice. Um, and one of the things that they do, which is hilarious, which is basically an evolved form of two-legged race, it's called Mokude, and this kind of is, it's like a centipede, so imagine a two-legged race, but times ten, so you got ten people trying to, you know, run forward cohesively, and it's hilarious. <laughs> You get, you get guys and girl teams doing this, and you're amazed, you know, you're amazed with the um, cohesion, you know, the, the way that these people are able to, to work together and sprint around the gym with their, their mokude, but then the most hilarious wipeouts you have ever seen where these kids, you know, like one goes down, but that immediately yanks the rest of the rope, and so they all go flying in like eight different directions. Um, men and women teams, and they just get smashed, and then they, uh, they get right back up again and start giving her, going around the room again, but it's pretty damn funny, so if they, um, if you're here for that, and you're, uh, you're teaching, and you get to see one of these school years as it starts, hope to see Mokude, because you'll, you'll be laughing. Pretty hilarious. Not to mention the practice days are pretty chill. I just kind of like watch them practice and try and involve myself as much as I can. I'm expected to be at the school, but you're not expected to do a great deal. Aside from that, another thing you get to experience, or hopefully you experience, uh, at this school I'd mentioned at one point, I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool if I uh, might have lunch with one of the classes. I think that'd be good, you know, they see me in a different light maybe if I have lunch with them. Uh, and they've been doing this uh, pretty religiously at the one school that I'm at, and it's been a really good time. There's always something different, you know. You gotta you gotta feel out the vibe every time you go into one of these. And uh, some kids want to ask you a bunch of questions. Some kids don't say shit to you. Um, you know, sometimes I'm learning a bit more Japanese, and I'm asking them a few questions in Japanese and stuff, and they're not responding that much. But that's the point I'm making that it's kind of like you just don't know how it's gonna be. And this one, I didn't see this coming. I finished, and it was pretty quiet, pretty chill lunch, I have to say. I'm also getting into older grades, where I've mentioned in other videos that the kids get more, a little more reserved at that point. You know, concerned with social hierarchy and what is cool and all this garbage. Um, and what happened at the end of this one was I was leaving the room, 
And then, you know, the, the sensei, the woman who's looking after the class, she doesn't even speak that much English, so I'm doing my best, and I just go up and say, you know, thank you very much for having me in the class. Give them a little uh, kyotsukide when I leave, which is like just saying take care. And then she runs out and she goes, wait, 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 wait. She's, I was like, what, what, nani? She goes, you arm wrestle. I was like, okay. And so I went back in and all the kids, all the males, actually, I should, none of the women were stepping up to do this, but about a good half a dozen, half a dozen, eight or nine of the students wanted to have arm wrestles with me <laughs> when I, when I finished my lunch. So this was very, very entertaining. It's one of the few times I get to tell the kids in my own language that I'm going to crush them and not care that I've said that. And I did, for the most part, it was pretty fun, but by like, I got guys lining up to have double arm wrestles and stuff. I, I made it pretty good. Had an excellent average, but uh, one or two of them got me in the end. You know, you got to swallow your pride there when a, little, when a little Japanese kid beats you in an arm wrestle. But I was getting worn out. Still, tons and tons of fun. Tons and tons of fun. And something, you know, that is just unique. And it kind of speaks to a uh, last like, little point I was going to make here. Just more and more that I'm seeing all these preconceptions that you have the culture when you come over here, where one of the most popular things is to talk about is it is a very conservative culture. And, uh, you know, they're quite a reserved people. And yes and no, it's like anywhere else, I have to say, you know, because just... Look at the states, you know, they, they have, they have a, uh, they've got a democratic and a conservative party. And whenever their conservative parties have been in, I don't see Americans suddenly being the most reserved people around the globe. They still have some of that American charm, we'll call it. <laughs> and uh, it's just the same in Japan. Man, these people are outspoken and having fun and loud and goofy. And they're, you know, you could call, I guess you'd call them liberal in that way. Uh, but just don't, uh, if you do come to the country or you're trying to develop an opinion of it, don't assume because it's tr known as traditional that people aren't going to spontaneously want to have arm wrestles with you and that people aren't going to be laughing their asses off in the staff room and acting like people. Surprise, just acting like normal people. Um, so really good, really fun day, lots of weird little cultural things to enjoy. You got the mocha day, you got the crazy lightning, uh, you got the arm wrestles in class, um, little note there about the seriousness of the people that you interact with. They're not so reserved. And uh, finally, something I hope a lot of people enjoy, if they ever come over to do what I've done, and that's to enjoy a little success with the students. I'm going to keep this brief, keep this video to 10 minutes, swear to God. Um, so I've been doing speech coaching, and it's just awesome. There's this uh, one girl who was particularly shy that I had started to coach and had spent some good time with. And I do anything. I've mentioned this. I've got a video talking about if you want to be a better speech coach. A lot of it is just making them have fun and getting them out of their shell and kind of their confidence will then cyclically improve their pronunciation and everything. And just you wouldn't believe this girl, you know, I asked, do we have speech coaching today? Today, And they said no, but this girl hunted me down and said, could we do a little bit? And it was only to show me I discovered how much she had progressed because she said she had like five minutes. And so they've got this whole speech that I've been working through with them. She'd memorized the whole thing, and she got up there with utter confidence and great hand gestures and just delivered the whole thing, no problem, having been given about a week since our last interaction with each other. And it just, you know, it made, you know, it made my body hurt where my heart used to be. So I was really, uh, I was amazed by it. She's a, she's a great student and just so wonderful to see someone come out of their shell and succeed and grow and change. And one of the big reasons that I wanted to come over here was to try and see something like that. So I haven't got tons of experiences like that yet, but that was singularly awesome. And I'm very grateful to have had it. And I hope if other people do the same, that they can experience something like it when they come. All right, that's it. Um, you know, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. More culture shock coming along. I'm shocked every day. I keep thinking it's going to stop, but it won't stop. It doesn't stop. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll, oh, Japanese word. We're going to go with, uh, what are we going to go with today? Damn it. I should know more of these off the hop, the hop of my head, the top. I've got it. If you want to say, if you want to empathize with somebody and you want to say, you know, Oh man, that's tough. You can say, Taihen desne, and that's just basically it.
that's tough. And uh, you can use it a lot when uh, they're trying to speak English. <laughs> um, and a song that I'm going to recommend, uh, you're going to see the name. Of, basically, it's Nine Inch Nails. I listened to it this morning. It's awesome. Um, my internet's down, though, but when I do post this video, obviously, I can connect it. So, uh, yeah, if you enjoy Nine Inch Nails, you'll love it. If you haven't heard of Nine Inch Nails, you'll love it. It's great. Uh, so, like I like to say, thanks for tripping with Dave, and until we meet again next time, world, ciao for now.